Wenn sie entkommen, sind sie tot! Mann, eure Stationen! Well, don't hang about. Snatch him! Some of the biggest unsolved mysteries of the world. Did aliens build the Giza pyramids? Was Atlantis actually a real place? And most importantly, how the frick is the Rotten Tomato score for Sherlock Holmes A Game of Shadows under 60%? I'm gonna be straight with you, my dearest viewers. I enjoyed the Sherlock series very much. I enjoyed the first movie very much. But to me, the best entry in the Sherlock Holmes universe to date is 2011's A Game of Shadows which by the way I think is one of the smartest stories ever crafted, but that's a topic for another time. Instead, today we are going to focus on the actual picture, specifically what makes this film visually so impressive. The prime example of this visual impressiveness being the forest chase sequence where Holmes and his crew are escaping from an army of pissed off armed up n-words. And uh, no, no, I mean those n-words. At its very core, all this scene is is just a bunch of people running in the woods. Yet somehow, director Guy Ritchie manages to turn it into something far more. And that's the reason for this video today. To figure out why this one particular forest chase stands out from other similar forest chases, like for example the one seen in Harry Potter. What cinematic tricks do the filmmakers of A Game of Shadows use to make this simplistic sequence so remarkable? Don't switch the channel and you'll find out. The Snorri cam shot, aka the so-called inverted POV shot, is when you make the camera and the target character into one single entity. As in, it creates the illusion that you, the audience, are right there with that said character maneuvering through the world around them. In a game of shadows, it looks like this. The original intended way of doing Snorri Cam is that you mount your camera on the actor. This stationarity is what creates the visual illusion that the world moves while the actor doesn't, even though it's actually the other way around. But of course, in this forest chase scene, for the most part, a practical rig wouldn't really work. The motion is too fast, the shots are too unrestricted. Even if you could go practical for the whole thing, that would mean a more lightweight camera, which in turn would mean sacrificing quality. And sacrificing quality isn't really Guy Ritchie's style. So instead, most of these shots are done in post-production, aka first shooting wider, then cropping the image, and finally using motion tracking and stabilization and so and so on. But me, I don't think that makes this effect any less impressive. In most cases you'd fine-tune rig shots in post anyway. And the ultimate fact is, these shots do look cool AF. But in addition to looking cool AF, the Snorri Cam effect also serves a more fundamental purpose. It allows the viewer to connect with the characters on a personal level, both the heroes and the villains. We can see their thoughts clearly, we can see their emotions clearly. Compare this to Harry Potter where, aside from the lack of any personal connection whatsoever, I'm honestly having trouble even keeping up with what's happening. It's hard to form any kind of connections with Harry Potter when you don't know which dark jacketed figure out of these however many dark jacketed figures he even is. And of course, the shaky cam effect doesn't really help. Thank you. 
Another visual trick a game of shadows utilizes that Harry Potter doesn't is slow motion. Some audiences today believe that slow motion has become an overused cinematic cliché. And that's a fair argument to make. But regardless, I'd say that slow motion as a visual tool can still be very effective, if only used properly. Which I believe is exactly what this Sherlock Forest chase sequence does. Just like with the snorri cam effect, these slow motion shots are very cool to look at. But once again, they also serve a more practical storytelling purpose. As in, they help build up moments. Moments like this. Did you see it? Did you register it? Of course you did, because of the slow motion. You saw the gunshot, you saw the impact, you saw the reaction. You just witnessed an emotional moment. And you did it without ever having to stop and break momentum. All thanks to slow motion. Take the slow motion away, you also lose the moment. In the Harry Potter chase, there are no moments. There is a time when Ron Weasley gets caught by the bad guys, but that's not an actual emotional moment. Why? Because it's missing one key ingredient. The reaction. We see the gunshots, or in this case a magical chain being flung from a wand, I guess, I, I don't really know. And we also see the impact. It's quick, but we do see it. What we don't see is the reaction, since even though our dear little Ronald just suffered a severe chase ending tumble, neither one of his so called friends ever even bother to notice. They don't look, they don't react, at all. This is the case because there is no way to properly visually convey this reaction, not without breaking momentum. Well, no way except for maybe one. The proper use of, you guessed it, slow motion. My dearest friends, I have been caught by magical chains shot out of magical wands. Therefore now I am fallen and cannot get back up. Please help me my friends. Bloody hell! As I mentioned before, the concept of running in the woods in of itself isn't anything too visually spectacular. So to combat this, both films do whatever they can to make it spectacular. They add the element of chase, they add stakes, explosions, projectiles, fancy camera movements, you name it. And in my opinion, both sequences accomplish what they set out to do. The difference is, A Game of Shadows always seems to do it a step better. First off, most of the sense of danger in Harry Potter is created with sound effects. It gets the job done. But in Sherlock Holmes, in addition to sound, the filmmakers also make sure to actually show the danger. We see bullets hit their targets, we see mortars throw dirt. We can hear it and we can see it. I'd say A Game of Shadows is also more visually consistent. For example, in Harry Potter, the direction of movement at the start is to the right but then midway it suddenly changes to the left. It's not a big deal, but it does kinda take away from the sense of momentum. Sure, Sherlock does take some liberties too, but for the most part the direction of movement in this sequence always stays toward the right. And this small fact of consistency not only makes the action easier to follow, it also maintains the audience's feeling of momentum. If I had to differentiate these two forest chases with one single visual, it would have to be this shot from Sherlock where a bullet tears through a tree in the foreground. Objectively, this shot doesn't have to be there. The scene would work just fine without it. But that's the thing about director Guy Ritchie. He's not someone who generally does things quote-unquote just fine. He's always willing to take that one extra visual step to make sure his work stands out. That's why I think he's one of the most talented visual filmmakers working today. It's why this forest chase scene in A Game of Shadows rises above the forest chase scenes in any other movie. The too long didn't read version? I personally enjoy Sherlock Holmes and other Guy Ritchie films very much because of one simple reason. He isn't afraid of bringing his camera and his visuals to life. There you go guys, thanks very much for watching as always. If you enjoyed anything here today, please leave a like as that really helps me out. 
This time I wanna ask your opinions about this movie, Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. What do you think? Does it deserve a rotten score or no? And why would you say most critics didn't enjoy it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks.